I want to talk about kind of a sad thing today, and that's people that leave Thailand. And I'm not talking about people that come here on vacation. <laughs> of course, they don't want to leave. I'm talking about people that actually move here, that retire here, and planned on making Thailand their life, and yet they leave. I mean, why does that happen? Um, there's actually a lot of reasons why, and if you know what they are before you come, or when you're a new visitor, maybe we can help that not happen to you. Sawati Kap, Sabaidi Mai Kap, and welcome to Chiang Mai, Thailand. I want to jump right into our topic. And I've really given this a lot of thought, and I think I've narrowed it down to five specific reasons that lead to people giving up their dreams, living in Thailand, and return home. Those things are number one, related to money. Number two is related to women or love. Number three is health. Number four are visas. And number five is overall happiness. I think maybe to be more accurate, what I should be saying is it's the absence of one or more of those things that causes the problem. But before I get to people that fail for those reasons, there's a whole group of people that fail before we even get to that level. And those are people that come to Thailand and never should have come in the first place. Don't get on that plane. And what I mean by that is coming to Thailand to start a new life here. I mean, we're not talking about doing it when you're 20 or 30 and it's a, it's, it's a new adventure. When you do it when you're in your 50s or your 60s or your 70s, I mean, you're, you're changing your life. You're making a major life decision, maybe one of the biggest ones you've ever made. So you really want to be sure that you're prepared, that Thailand's the right place for you and, and you're the right person to be in Thailand. And one of the big mistakes I find that people make is they don't have adequate preparation before they come. What people do is they come over for maybe a week or two uh, and they have a nice vacation and they think, wow, I love what I see about this city, this country. I'm going to make that my, my new home. And I guess for some people that might work, but that's really not what I would recommend because that's kind of a fantasy view of, of Thailand. You're, you're in a hotel. People are taking care of you. You're going out to eat. It's just really not the same thing as a day-to-day -day life. So what I recommend that you do, even though it requires an investment of, of time and money, is that you literally take off a couple months and you narrow it down in advance the few cities or maybe even it's more than one country that you really want to see. So maybe you've narrowed it down to my home city of Chiang Mai and Bangkok and Phuket, maybe even a city in the Philippines or Vietnam. So you give each one of those cities four or five days and then choose the one city that you really think is going to be right for you and stay there for at least a couple months. And when you go there, rent an Airbnb type place where you can really get a feel for, for living there on your own and do the kind of things that you would do if you were living there, go to the local grocery store to buy your food, use the local transportation, do the kind of things that you would do for fun if you were living there. I mean, if you like, if you're a gym rat, then join a gym. If you like to go golfing, you know, go to some golf clubs. If you like to be doing, I don't know, play backgammon, then file, find some backgammon clubs. And in fact, in Item number five, which is happiness, I'm going to talk about how you can do those things. But my point is really have a, a daily life of what it's like to live in Thailand. Just live the life. And it'll give you a better idea if the city and the people um, are going to be right for you. And if you're really smart, you'll actually do this twice because it's nice to see a region in different seasons. If you come, for example, to Thailand in November, it's the best month. I mean, it's a beautiful weather clean air. Uh, but then maybe if you're going to be here in the rainy season or the summer, it's really not to your liking. So the more thorough you are, the better your chances of success. All right. That being said, let's get to our five things and let's start with number one, money. And when I say money, what I really mean is the lack of money. 
Um, there's probably three main ways that people tend to lose their money. Uh, one is just poor planning. Uh, number two would be women. And number three would be health issues. And actually, these last two categories I talk about as separate issues in just a minute. So let's just talk about poor planning. A lot of people come to Thailand and they think like, hey, it's a, it's a cheap country. I don't need to really spend time working out a budget and things like that. But you can't do that. Um, Thailand is cheap, yes, but how cheap it is depends on where you're coming from. And what I mean by that is if you come from, let's say like me, I came from Southern California, that is a very high cost of living, much like not just California, but the East Coast of the United States, London, Vancouver, many places around the world. So for me, for every dollar that I spend in California, for me to get an equal lifestyle for transportation and food and housing is literally about 20 to 25 cents on the dollar. I'm literally saving 75 to 80% having basically an equal life in Thailand. For some people that live in a less expensive place, maybe only saving 50%. But regardless, you still need to work out a budget. So let's say you've determined that your lifestyle is going to cost you $1,500 a month as a single person. Maybe if you're a, a couple, it'll be $2,000 a month. And by the way, if you really haven't looked into cost of living in Thailand, uh, Joy and I did what I think is a really helpful, very detailed video on the cost of living in Chiang Mai. We look at actual apartments, we bring you to restaurants, you can see the food and the cost. And even if you're going to be living in another part of Thailand, it's still going to be very helpful regarding giving you an idea of what costs are. So let's say you work out your budget as $1,500 a month, just as an example. Well, obviously, you can't go to Thailand with only $1,500 in your pocket. You should have at least several months of your monthly budget, not to mention an emergency fund, which we'll talk about in a little bit when we get to the health category, because that's typically where the biggest potential risks for extra costs tend to arise. And if you think you're going to come to Thailand and get a job to support yourself, uh, sadly, you've got to think again. Um, Thai jobs are basically protected. Um, they don't want Westerners taking those jobs. So almost every job is closed to Westerners. There's only a few high-level jobs and needed professions that are open and English teachers. So it's probably in this last category that for a lot of people, you've got your best opportunity to actually work in Thailand. But the smartest move is to get a Western income and then spend that Western income at the lower cost of living in Thailand. So it's, it's a double win for you. So ideally, you want to find an online job that you can do from anywhere. And it's obviously best if you can find that job in your home country before you move to Thailand. The second on the list is love and romance. And you might laugh at that and say, hey, Randy, that's kind of a silly thing to put on your, your categories here. But hey, it's, uh, it's legit. I mean, think about it. One of the main reasons that men come to Thailand to retire is to meet a Thai woman. And, and it makes sense. I mean, Thai people, especially Thai women, um, are known to be very loving and very loyal partners. So, I mean, it makes sense. But I think a lot of guys go about it the wrong way. A lot of guys will meet a woman online and it's not the right woman, but because they've invested themselves in that relationship and they come over and that's the only woman that they know, they spend a lot of time and money and emotion in that one relationship. And if it fails, they basically just write off the whole Thailand experience because she was a big reason for why he came over. So I'm not putting down online dating. In fact, I will admit that uh, my partner Joy and I, and if you're new to my channel, that's Joy there. And I know in that picture she looks about 20, but <laughs> she's actually 44. But I think in general, online dating, it's a great way to meet somebody, to maybe try a relationship when you get here, um, someone to show you around and teach you about Thailand. And I mean, you want to be a gentleman and be honest with her regarding what your intentions are and not lead her on. But I mean, just start it as a potential relationship and just see where it goes. Don't necessarily invest the rest of your life in that one relationship that started online. 
And another mistake that a lot of guys make is the kind of women that they choose to meet in Thailand. A lot of guys kind of fall prey to the, to the bar girl situation. And I understand it's probably tempting. I mean, they're, they're beautiful, they're young, they're very personable. And maybe the, the good side of you wants to kind of rescue them from a questionable life and, and, uh, and make their life wonderful. And that's a very honorable thing. But a lot of these women just don't have a lot of the same Thai characteristics that I will say an average non-bar girl Thai woman has. So you're getting off on risky territory if you've chosen to start a relationship with a bar girl or someone in that kind of related industry. The way to really have a successful Thai relationship is just to meet a normal Thai woman. And I'm talking about the woman that you meet in a restaurant serving you the food or, or that you buy a ticket from at the movie theater or that you bump into at the grocery store when you're shopping. Just an average Thai woman. You know, when I went online and, and Joy and I met each other, I was like really specific regarding the kind of person I was looking for. I'm, I'm a lawyer. I wanted somebody with a lot of education. I wanted someone that's a kind of a professional person like me. And, Joy's got a bachelor's degree and a master's degree and a professional job. And to me, she's the most wonderful, beautiful woman that I could imagine. And there's a lot of wonderful Thai women like that. Um, but again, <laughs> you don't really meet them in bars. So don't let your heart get broken by a Thai bar girl or any Thai woman for that matter. And uh, that's only part of the reason why you're in Thailand. And give yourself the chance to meet somebody new. There's a lot of wonderful Thai women out there. All right, now let's talk about health and health-related issues. And that's probably the most important of all these topics because here's the issue that we face. In our home country, like for me as an American, I have Medicare and you've got similar benefits, whether you're from Australia or the UK or Canada. And we lose those benefits when we leave our home country, at least we do in the United States and I think for those other countries as well. As an American, for example, Regular Medicare doesn't cover anything when I'm out of the country, doesn't even cover emergencies. There is one exception to that, and I did a video on that for Americans, a little loophole. But by and large, we don't get those benefits. So our choices are we can either get a Thai insurance policy or we can do what's called self-insure, which basically means just setting aside enough money to pay for your medical care yourself should you have a medical emergency. Obviously, getting health insurance in Thailand is just as important as it is in your home country. But here's the problem that comes up sometimes. Age and pre-existing conditions. If you're over 70, it can be tricky to get some policies. If you're 80 or over, it's basically impossible to get a policy. Even if you're under those age groups, what about pre-existing conditions? Either two things are going to happen. Either they'll be excluded completely or there'll be a provision that states that you can't make a claim for that cause for a, for a certain amount of time after you start your policy. The good thing about health insurance in Thailand is it's incredibly cheap. I would say that comparing an equivalent policy for me in the United States as opposed to Thailand is it's probably about 75% cheaper in Thailand. And the reason for that is just that medical care costs so much less in Thailand. Now there's two routes that you can go regarding getting insurance. You can go the cheapest route possible where you get a policy that's really having minimal health value, but it's meeting the requirements of getting some visas. And those are incredibly inexpensive, even for let's say a 65 year old man. If you do make up your mind to get a quality health insurance policy in Thailand, there's two things that you need to be very careful of. There are some policies being sold in Thailand where the insurer is not very reputable in the sense that with some insured, if you have a very debilitating, expensive disease to treat, when your policy expires, they will cancel you and not renew you. And now you're really up a creek because not only do you not have insurance, but a new insurer will not cover that pre-existing condition. So you're basically doubly hurt. So you want to make sure you get a reliable carrier that will stick with you regardless of whether you get ill or not and how severe that illness might be. You also want to make sure that the rates are not going to be going up too much. 
So the best advice I can give you there is to talk to a quality insurance agent. Here's information about Nat, a gentleman that I know who's Thai, speaks perfect English. I find him to be very reliable and he can assist you whether you live in Thailand or you're not even in Thailand right now. If you're in Thailand, then you can talk to your friends and get your own recommendation regarding an agent. All right, next up is visas. And visas in Thailand are kind of a headache. Now, if you're 50 or over, there are retirement visas that you can get that are really not that difficult to get. You either have to show either a monthly pension of a certain amount or put a certain amount of money in a Thai bank account. I can't go through all the visas because there's just too many. It would literally take hours to talk about all the visa types, but um, there's not only the retirement visas, but there are also many visa types that you can get whether you're over 50 or under 50, from the elite visa to the LTR visa. There's the ED visa, which is when you're a student. You don't even have to be a full-time student, but meet a, meet a certain minimum numbers of study. And usually that can go for two years, sometimes an extra year. But the specific advice I want to give you today on visas is the biggest mistake a lot of people make is they just come to Thailand and they think, I'll figure it out when I get here. And sometimes you can do that, but it's actually easier to get the best visa type for you from your home country working with the Thai embassy there. All right, so our last issue is happiness, or as I, I think I said before, the lack of happiness is the problem. And all those things I mentioned before, health, women, visas, money, all that kind of ties in with happiness. So maybe you could call this a, a catch-all category, but I want to talk about kind of an independent part of happiness, and that's just your emotional welfare separate from the issues that we just talked about. I think one of the big problems that people have in terms of not really feeling comfortable in Thailand is that they don't really come with the right attitude. You have to come to Thailand saying, I recognize that I'm coming to a completely different culture, a completely different language, uh, an alien environment completely different from the West or, you know, going to Europe, for example. I mean, there's not a big difference going from America to France or Australia to Spain. I mean, it's a very similar environment. But going to Thailand or Vietnam or any Asian country is a huge difference. So sadly, a lot of people come to Thailand and they are overcome by the difficulties of being in a foreign country where their own language is not spoken, where it's sometimes a struggle to communicate, where things just aren't automatic. I mean, when you live in your home country, life is easy. We don't have to think about um, where do I go to get a driver's license? How do I open a bank account? What side of the street do I drive on? What are the right customs? I mean, it just comes naturally. We don't have to worry about if I go to a certain place, will they speak my language and understand me? But in Thailand, it's a part of your daily life. If you've got the right attitude, it's really not a problem at all. I think most of us actually embrace that challenge and we welcome it. Um, that's one of the reasons we chose Thailand instead of going to a country that, that speaks English. And a big part of trying to find happiness is to avoid loneliness. And it's actually a really big problem. I mean, I can identify because I was going to Thailand for maybe five years before um, I kind of made the big move. And there would be times when I would go and I would be there for a month or so. And this was before I met Joy. And, and I was by myself. Um, my daughter lives in Thailand, but she doesn't have every day to spend with her dad. Um, so there would be so much time that I would spend alone. I would eat alone. I would walk around alone. Um, and it does kind of wear on you. And I could remember there were days where I almost thought, you know, I'm just going to go home early. I'm just not enjoying myself. So I can identify how people can get lonely and become unhappy. So the key is really to be active and embrace the community. And I don't mean just the expat community. I mean the Thai community as well. And if you wonder how to do that, it's really pretty easy. I did a video specifically on integrating yourself in, in a Thai society and finding happiness through a lot of activities. And it's, it's based in Chiang Mai, so certainly valuable for someone moving there, but I think helpful even for someone moving to another part of Thailand. So, you know, what can you do? Well, 
If you go online, you can go to meetup.com. Uh, you can punch in any city and you can find a list of activities and find things to do with other people. Some are going to be just tourists. Um, other people are going to be uh, residents like you. Uh, either way, it's a great way to stay active and meet people. Um, if you go on Facebook forums, every city has one for expats of whatever your nationality is. So they're going to have their own meetup groups and, and regular meetings. Um, they're going to have expat clubs in most cities. And just going out and about with the right attitude. I mean, I get into conversations with people at the grocery store, at the pharmacy, at the produce market. If you just have a smile on your face and you're welcoming to people, it's really amazing how many people just want to talk to you and share their story. And I've met a lot of great people that way. And the other thing that's really important to do is just start doing the things that you would be doing for fun if you were at home. So if you like to play golf, I mean, start playing golf. You'll meet people there. If you like to hike, same thing. Chess club, whatever, whatever it might be, just start doing those things. And, and don't just live in an expat world. It's really important to make Thai friends too, whether it's a Thai girlfriend or just a friend, but you'll start meeting Thai people and they're a great introduction to your community and all the things that there are to do there. And don't forget you've got the same cyber options you've got in your home country, whether that's you like to watch Netflix or if you're an American, then uh, you know the NFL Network or um, the Premier League, whatever it might be. You know, all those things that you enjoy are going to be available for you in Thailand as well. And as far as communicating with your friends back home, don't give up on that. We've got all these great apps that are completely free to do video chats like WhatsApp and Facebook and Telegram and all those things. You can be talking to all your friends and it doesn't cost you a cent. So I hope you found those five things helpful. And I really think if you're aware of them, you won't fall into those traps. So basically, I think as long as you are really thorough regarding checking out a city in advance, having a good financial plan, getting a good health policy, or having enough money in the bank for a medical emergency, dating the right woman, and being socially active, you can have a very successful life in Thailand and in all honesty, have a happier and a fuller life than you had back home. I hope you found this helpful. I hope you'll give this video a like and I would love it if you subscribe to my channel and ring that notification bell so you know about new videos coming out. Until I see you guys again, safe travels. Kap kum kap. Yeah.